All right, folks, I am super stoked today to bring to you two entrepreneurs who've created a company that is going to change the way you do real estate. All the way from Austin, Texas, you're going to meet Michael and Stacy Speaks coming up next on Cliff's Notes. Real estate agents, are you struggling with the day-to-day -day grind, dialing for dollars, putting in hours of floor time with little to show for it? Are you looking for tips, tricks, and tactics to accelerate your career as an agent that will have you closing more homes, working with more clients, and earning more money than ever before? Hi, my name's Cliff Freeman, and I've spent the past two decades of my real estate career running one of the top brokerages in DFW and personally coaching over a thousand high-performing real estate professionals across North America. I created this podcast to share the strategies and tactics you need to explode your real estate business. I guarantee it. Yeah, we got the guarantee. The guarantees are on today, C3. Uh, I think we got something pretty darn special we're going to bring today. What do you think, man? We do. We had a great lunch, and I'm excited to... Uh get after it. This is going to be an amazing show. If you're in the real estate business, we're about to introduce you to a little company right now. It's little now, but it ain't going to be little for long that has been successfully tested in Austin that is going to change the way you do business, especially when you're working with buyers. I'm going to tell you what, this is something you're going to want to keep an eye on. We're about to roll it out in Dallas. And without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce the founders of Tour Zaz, Michael and Stacy Speaks. Thank you. Welcome all the way from Austin, Texas, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we are super excited. And I'm excited. You can't see my tail wagon. You can see me bouncing up and down a little bit. But uh, I had the pleasure to meet uh, Stacy in Denver. Um, gosh, I guess it's been about two months ago now, yeah. hasn't it? Or maybe yeah. maybe a little longer. Yeah. And first got introduced to your company. And now I have the pleasure to meet uh, your husband, Michael. And and really, Michael is the technology driver behind this, uh, this, this, this product. And I want to say product because, you know, in real estate, guys, we get a lot of squirrels and, and gold coins uh, along the, the, the path that we want to pick up. And people are creating all kinds of problems for the products they've developed. Did you hear what I said? That's right. Most of the things that we get in real estate are products that were created that didn't have a problem until the product was created. This software was actually created to solve a problem that we all have. And if you've ever taken buyers out on a tour, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's get right into it now. Um, tell us a little bit about what it, what the heck is Tours as? I love the name, by the way. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks. First of all, thanks for having us. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. And uh, yeah, so, um, you know, Tours as was, uh, we always love coming out by saying built by agents for agents. You know, truly, we have been, my wife and I have been in, in the uh, real estate industry for over 20 years, and we worked with hundreds and hundreds of home buyers. Uh, sitting in the back seats of our cars, driving around with big clipboards with stacks of printed MLS sheets and, and everything that we have done to give the best experience possible, right, on the day of showing homes. And so uh, one day, Stacey and I were, it was after, after, actually after uh, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of clients of doing this, I just got home one day and I said, honey, this has got to be different. This is, we got to do something different here handing printed MLS sheets over to, especially to our millennial clients. Really, it's all age of clients, but our millennial clients and them handing it back to us because the consumers live on their phones anyway to navigate their busy days. So we just came around and says, let's just recreate the experience. Let's find something to, to, to help us in building these showing tours, scheduling these showing tours, and administering these showing tours. And so that's where Tours As was born. We, uh, we had really pulled together all the pain points. We studied and analyzed everything that we had been doing. Um, all of us, all of our viewers are doing uh, for all these many years to pull together and really present the right showing tour to our home buyer clients. But it's really riddled with all kinds of inefficiencies and archaic pen and paper uh, manual uh, archaic clutter. So. We decided to build Tours As to help uh, leverage modern technology to really accentuate and help 
save a lot of time and put realtors back into the spotlights where they need it. Yeah, you know, the setting up showing tours, and I know all of you in the audience who've done this, uh, can be one of the biggest time-consuming, frustrating things that there is. Uh, you know, clients, uh, they call you right before you're ready to go start the tour and say, hey, scratch this one and let's add this one. Or, you know, you pull up to a house and, and it turns out that they didn't do the work ahead of time and you pull up and there's a, you know, a, a truck on cinder blocks next door mm -hmm. and they go, oh, no, mm -hmm. we don't like this neighborhood and boom. Mm -hmm. And that throws your whole schedule off and, and everything else. And, you know, agents don't know how long a, a client's going to want to be at a house. I mean, it's a, it's pretty much a wild guess, you know, how long you need to schedule each mm -hmm. showing for and that kind of thing. But you're, you guys have figured out a way to, and it, I, I'm not the software expert, that's why you're here, mm -hmm. but you guys have come up with the tools that make this whole process take much less time, do it much faster. Uh, you can really literally change things on the fly yep. while you're out in the field. And the customer experience is at a, a whole new level because you don't have to say, okay, you know what, let's pull over to Starbucks for 30 minutes while I fix the, That's you know, right. the tour schedule, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to, you know, go out of your way. This is something that, and, and by the way, you don't have to have an assistant back at the office mm -hmm. that's taken her time out of her day or his day to, to make all these changes for you while you're out in the field. So, and you know, the, the, the benefits to this are, 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 are many, many, many fold. Um, you were, you did a demo for our team and, and you guys have successfully had this product uh, being used by, what was it, about 1,500 agents in Austin, if I recall correctly? Yeah, that's right. We were found in 2018. We started actually uh, whiteboarding it and putting pen to the paper before that. But then uh, uh, we've really been in a beta test, of course, and then COVID came around, and which kind of slowed down the progression, but it gave us an opportunity to really take even a finer group of agents in the Austin area, make it the where it is right now. There's a lot more improvement, which we're excited about, but... Uh, we got about 1,500 plus agents in the Austin area, and uh, and we're about to expand to over 250 to 300,000 agents in over 14 states here in the next uh, three to four months. Well, I know I'll tell you the Cliff Freeman Group mm -hmm. is super excited mm -hmm. to be part of your rollout here into Dallas, mm -hmm. and I know that's one of the reasons why you're up here is you're working on getting all that finalized and ready right. to go. Um, so Dallas will be your the next market that you're coming to. That's right, the media. Okay. All right, now. Uh, in our MLS, they just introduced Broker Bay. Showing time has been predominantly since they acquired CSS has been the big one that everybody uses. Also happens to be owned by Zillow. Uh, we'll leave comments uh, for the comment section uh, about that uh, for the audience to comment on. Uh, but the reality is, is that your tool is sort of agnostic when it comes to whatever the showing service is. So you've pretty much uh, made the showing service, I don't want to say irrelevant, but it's a commodity in terms of you, the, the agent will no longer have to go in directly and deal with the interface in the showing service. Everything is in the palm of your hand. Is that the way it works? Yeah, that's right. We've really built it, uh, we've really built it across multiple platforms, multiple mobile platforms, Android, iOS, and desktop device. But, you know, uh, I want to bring something up that you had mentioned just about people ask what makes us different than the rest of the showing services. And, you know, um, one of our key differentiators is, you know, first of all, our primary key differentiator is buyer agency. We really built tours as to address all the pain points the buyer's agents experience. But when you're talking about, for example, broker bay or showing time, et cetera, they historically have benefited primarily the listing side of the transaction with very little flexibility for the buyer side. Mm -hmm. That's really where Tours As's pain point is being solved, or the, the pain point of the practicing realtor every day is being uh, solved. And what we did is we actually built Tours As to coexist with the broker base and the showing times, meaning if the agent, if the agent has to book a showing and the listing agent's mandating that it's being done through a broker bay or a showing time, et cetera, an agent can still use tours as to build the tours, 
schedule that, even if it means that they have to manually go out and do that with the showing time or broker bay. Once that's approved, they can take care of that within their tours as application and then digitize the experience for their customers. Okay. So that's how we coexist with other other so uh, showing even, services. Yeah, even if the instructions and MLS are contact mm -hmm. uh, listing agent, you can still uh, use the showing or tours as rather to uh, create that whole experience. And, exactly. And it's, so it's kind of seamless. Yep. Uh, and and the, yep. the, the uh, your buyer client has no idea um, what yep. all you've had to pull out of your hat to, to get this, you know, this tour off, right? Yeah, and that's exactly right. And because we really came into the market with our key differentiator being buyer agency and the tour side for, for, for scheduling showings for buyers, at the request of MLSs and brokerages, even the growing request from EXP uh, leaders, um, we needed to bring in, especially on the heels of the showing time acquisition by Zillow, everyone wanted to see also a side of tours as that could help them on the listing side as well. And so that's when we came into the fold and did that. So if in the event someone wants to use us for the listing side as well, we can actually meet both sides of the transaction. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, you solve more than just the one problem. That's I mean, right. You're actually another... Uh, another option, you know, my uh, my dad when I was growing up always said a good rat's got at least two holes to go to, <laughs> right? So yeah, this yep. is another option yep. for people. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, we're super excited about it. Yeah, that's yep. fantastic. Well, you know, at the at the, at the at the intro of the show, I was talking about how there's so many products out in the real estate space that mm -hmm. are designed by really smart people, but they're not in the real estate business. They come up with these great solutions for problems that don't really exist, but they try to make it sound like it's a problem. You guys really addressed at the heart one of the most difficult parts of being a buyer agent, which is putting together that tour. Mm -hmm. Especially, can you, I mean, my goodness, sometimes by the time you get the tour put together, they've already got that multiple offers, mm -hmm. you know, no showings, all offers due by, you know, five o'clock this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now it's changing. So we talked about this a little bit before the show, but what we're starting to see, and everybody, you know, across the country, we're starting to see the market shift a little bit here back toward uh, a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. So if there was ever a time uh, to have this strategic advantage in your pocket, so mm -hmm. to speak, now would be it. Um, what do you, uh, you, you guys have obviously put, you've been doing this since you, you, you conceptualized it in 2018, right? Is that when you whiteboarded? Well, it was actually, uh, it, it's interesting you mentioned this because, you know, it, first the, the first thing we do as real estate practitioners is, you know, every day our processes are riddled with inefficiencies. And so in 2014, after a series of tours that were showing tours that she and I both were out on, we got back and I said, honey, this is, this has got to be, there's got to be something different about this because last night me scheduling six showings got into the time of our dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many other people, many other agents, colleagues, friends of ours have said, my family's tired of me spending Friday evening scheduling showings when I need to be out with family, spending good quality time with them. And so that was the first pain point. We said, okay, what can we do to put this on autopilot? You know, and so I got onto, of all things, a Wix.com website maker. And I started creating the first page of what I could visualize being a different experience. Wow. And one page became five pages, five pages became 15. We became what became ultimately a 50 page prototype website. Wasn't working, but it was what we ultimately delivered to a software development company and they said, wow. So it was like a storyboard sort That's of right. thing. That's and exactly then, right. And we used to come back in the old yep. days, we call that vaporware, yep. right? Yep. It didn't really exist, but mm -hmm. you could take the conceptually, you could take the idea to somebody who knew to build the back end mm -hmm. to support what you were trying to do. It was and, essentially what people, other people sit at a bar and, or sit at wherever and draw out something on a napkin. Right, right. I, I think you were telling me you have a collection of napkins that are going to go in the that Hall too. of Fame, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> the Tours Hall exactly. of Fame. Exactly, yep. Right. yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Before they ended up in a Wix website, they ended up on a cocktail napkin or back of a coffee, coffee napkin or whatever. Right. Now, what, Stacy? what previous uh, technology background did you have prior to to, to looking at this opportunity. Uh, give a you know, I'm not really a technology person. I mean, I'm, I, he's helped me become, you know, semi-savvy. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond, I can turn the computer off and on, but he's my, I live with tech support here, so he helps me troubleshoot tech issues. But I mean, in terms of, I mean, building software and being exposed <clears throat> to a development team and 
how you go about building software. I mean, this has been a completely new venture. But, you know, um, what the development team would say is, you know, I'm the agent in the field using the software. So anymore, you know, Michael's not necessarily out in the field using the software like I am. And so I can come back and give them feedback that Michael's a little bit distant from now. Um, that, and they'll say, run this by Stacy. See how she does with her buyers with this particular feature this weekend, you know? So I'm kind of their test case when they're trying out new features or that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's as close as I've ever come to being in the technology weeds. But, but Stacy, tell us a little bit about, cause you're really the kind of the real estate face here and you're the, that's your really your passion in addition to tours as. Tell us a little bit about the environment that you guys um, developed this. You were at one of the top independent brokers in Austin. Uh, you were the number one or two team there, if I remember correctly, selling a ton of real estate. And you know, you and you, we were talking about it, what a grind it is yeah. and how hard it mm -hmm. is. And part of what makes it that grind is the problem you're solving with this tool. Um, tell us a little bit about some of your real estate experiences. Yeah, so Michael and I have been in real estate about 20 years. Um, I, I got my license in 2002, Michael got his in 2003. And, um, and in 2010, we joined what then was an up and coming independent brokerage in Austin that became the number one independent brokerage in all of Central Texas. Um, and Michael, we weren't in the top one or two teams. We were in, I would say, the top you know, six teams year after year and the last few years since I lost my sidekick to a technology company. Um, <laughs> you know, I've tried to keep up, um, but I, we're usually in the top 10, I would say. Um, but at that brokerage, I mean, you're, if you're in the top 10, you're doing you know, $30, $40 million a year, and we don't have a big team. We've never really built a big team. We have you know, our um, transaction coordinators and assistants and all, but um, it's mainly been Michael and I um, as the team. Um, so we have been in our environment, you know, top producers in, in our company and in the Austin market. Um, like I said, I mean, number of transactions would be maybe 35 transactions a year or something like that, anywhere from about 18 to 26 million a year. Last year we did 36 million. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. But that's a grind, you know, and we're not the team that ever wanted to be 100 transactions a year. That's just not who we are. We just like to do other things like travel and other things other than just like be on the grind. But mm -hmm. even if you're doing 35 transactions a year, it's a lot of dang work. And it's a lot of work <laughs> the last few years when you look at by the time you get a client under contract in the starting in summer of 2020 through the end of 2021 through the middle of 2022 for two solid years. I mean, you were showing a lot of houses and writing a lot of offers mm -hmm. before you had a buyer under contract and what they were having to do in order to get under contract, like, you know, makes your stomach turn, you know, as far, much as they were having to pay over list and all the terms, like, you know, given their firstborn and all their, half their blood away um, in order to get a house under contract. And so the grind of that the last couple of years has definitely um, um, made us get to a place in the last year where it's like, um, is this the grind we want to stay in or how do we better leverage? Sure, sure. And and we can talk about that a little people. bit more in a minute, but I think what you're, you were at that, that sort of uh, fork in the road that a lot of realtors get to where um, you have to decide, you know, what's going to be my exit strategy. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, and I, my favorite phrase is to say, I don't want to be that 80 year old guy schlepping snotty nosed kids around in the back seat of my car while their parents are griping about the avocado green appliances and, and shag carpeting in the last <clears throat> house we looked at. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, I mean, there was no, have you ever been to a realtor's retirement party? We, we talk about that a lot C3, you know, and, and up to this point, there really hasn't been one, but, Stacey, you mentioned something uh, that I found really interesting is that, you know, you guys also could see outside of the box. We talked a little earlier about, you know, if you go back and, and you go back 30, 40, 50, 60 years in the real estate business, the whole thing has shifted from being broker centric, centric to being agent centric. The technology has allowed agents to be able to take over a lot of what the broker did in the past. For example, we talked about lead generation. Mm -hmm and things like that. 
One of the things that, that I'm aware of that you, you mentioned at lunch is you talked about um, an hourly worth or what is a, you know, how does, the, how does a real estate agent figure out what their hourly worth is and, and why is that important? Why is time management for mm. agents, why is that the top one or two things they need to master? I mean, it's just a bandwidth issue. You know, it's just that we've only got so much capacity as a human, you know, and if we've got families and other commitments, most of us do, um, other things we want to do, hopefully most of us have other things we want to do other than just grind real estate um, as much as we love it, um, there, there becomes a bandwidth issue, you know, and so you, you have to begin looking at how do I better leverage my time, you know, whether that's through the talents of other people, um, through systems and processes, et cetera, and, and part of that you know, is looking at how am I spending my time? How am I spending every hour of my day and what exactly am I doing? Am I doing the things that I love and I'm the best person to be doing it? Or are there things I need to begin delegating? Um, it's the whole idea, I think you guys are familiar with traction and EOS and the mm -hmm. whole idea of sure, yeah. delegate and elevate, you know, and figuring out kind of where your, where your sweet spot is and therefore what's not your sweet spot is somebody else's sweet spot. How do you better leverage that? But all that becomes about better leveraging your time and your return on your investment. You're always going to have a higher return on your investment when you're doing what, what you're both great at and what you love doing mm -hmm. and delegating whatever's left. Yeah. Now, as, as far as other things involving real estate, but sort of outside of the transactional level work, you guys also had a very successful short sale coaching and training company. Michael, tell us about that. Oh no, some people have been reaching out to us lately saying, do I need to dust off the books? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, no, you know, I think the, probably the, sure, we, we, we actually had one, uh, or we had a top uh, short sale training company back from about 2006 through 2011. And uh, many of our, our uh, people watching the show today probably remember us, especially with how much we trained here in the Dallas area. But um, no, I think probably the bigger story out of that is, is, is really what led to that training and what led to the desire to want to train. Actually, the desire was to improve our own business and to improve the way we did our own personal transactions. So it started with us simply working on our business rather than getting working too much in the business. And so, you know, it's just... I think the bigger story here that what I, it's when you bring up our short sale background, the thing I take a lot of pride in was the ability as a real estate agent, as a solo practitioner is to say that I truly stepped outside of the box for a moment to see what was going right and wrong with how I was doing my business. And I was able to get quiet long enough and to be able to understand how to break out, we always talk about the day we put out 150 files, all of them had failed. All of them were, were things that, that after working four to five months in the, at a short sale, a family went to foreclosure because a bank turned around and didn't approve our short sale. Well, why was that? Could we blame the bank for that or was it something we did? And we started really analyzing all these things and we did some modifications just like we did when we created Tours As, we took a look at what were we responsible for? What were we doing ahead of the game that we could pivot, that we could make a few adjustments, increase our hourly net worth? I mean, all of these things benefited as a result of taking a look at how we were doing our business this way because it wasn't working. It wasn't working. There were aspects of how we were doing our business that were speaking loud and clear to us. We just had to listen and change and pivot, and not be afraid of that to move a different direction with it. Wow. So 20 years in the business, um, you learn a lot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and to be able to have the, the ability mm -hmm. to just to have the vision to come up with uh, something that really solves a big problem in in our business. Mm -hmm. What's different about you guys? Why why is why did you come up with this? Is there something in your background? Is there something at some point where I mean, are you just a natural 
puzzle <laughs> solver or how did this how did you figure this out well you know it's uh you know by my 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 mom and stacy constantly remind me that i was the little kid that that even at four years old went up in front of a house grabbed someone's flowers wrapped them up went up to the front door and sold them their own flowers <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I had fun on that one. That's that's a pretty good. That's so, pretty good. but but yeah. what I mean by that was there where there was a will, there was a way, yeah. and and it, what that ultimately trans. Uh, uh, as I grew older, I think I always found myself where there was a problem. My grandpa, who was really a big leading figure in my life, um, you know, he came from the war and everything. But for him, everything was a schematic. Everything, if it wasn't on a schematic, it wasn't supposed to work. And and I was always the one who said, forget the schematic. There's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. And so part of that, sure, is a personal makeup that just simply doesn't take no for an answer. You know, or if something's painful, it doesn't always mean you got to turn your back on it, walk away from it. It means there might be an opportunity. Well, and, you know. The, I, I mentioned to you guys before I came across this Earl Nightingale uh, audio thing about, you know, what rich people do differently than poor people. And one of the things, the, the, one of the big premise in there, premises in there is that, you know, you call your own shots and you, your wealth will be determined in this life by how well you serve other people. Is that in your DNA? Is that what, do you feel like that's what caused you to want to go out and solve this problem? Yeah, and you know, I would say, uh, you know, she probably would, uh, she knows me better than anyone. And I'm only focusing on because I'm the one that actually was the visionary behind this. But I, you, you said, I, I could only imagine what Pillow Talk sounds like, you know what I mean? Well, we spent a lot of times decompressing about, you know, what are the, this is just way too hard. You know, and of course we, we, we verbalize the things that need to take place and unfold. And then all of a sudden it's that translation of, okay, we're obviously got a problem here. So how do we go fix it? You know, so I don't know if that's anything. I don't, I will never say that's something special. It's just mm -hmm. the way we think, you know, when there's, when there's a problem, of course, you know, it, when you're going back to our short sales. You know, it was literally the day that, and, I, and to Stacy's point, just like 98% of other agents in the industry back at the time, they were turning their backs on short sales because they had chalked them up to being something too difficult. You know, just something too difficult when no one was really saying, well, why are they difficult? Is it right. the bank's fault? Is it the homeowner's fault? Is it whose fault? Is there anyone's fault? Is there just a process that's undefined here? and things like this. So typically where there's, there, there's a problem, most people are going to turn their back on it where there's friction, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know, some people, probably a lot of successful people in the, in, in the world have taken pain points that a lot of other people walk away from and turn around and said, let's, let's do something different with that. Right. Right. I'll pipe you know? in on that. Yeah, he please. is special. He does have a gift mm. of, he is very much a visionary. He's very much to the core an entrepreneur, and he's very much a problem solver. And we li we all live in this industry, and there's we all can most of us take for granted the way things have always been. This is how we do things. These are our systems and processes. We surround ourselves by people that these are their systems and processes. We copy those, and we just kind of regurgitate the same kind of things, right? But Michael's always on the edge of it, like he's immersed in it. But he's always a little on the edge going, huh, why do we do it that mm. way? Like he actually is dialed in enough to ask the question of why we do something a certain way where most of us just like carry on and do it the status quo way of doing things. But he will question it, but he won't let it go. He'll start asking other people, have you ever thought about why we do it that way? And then he'll get other people. Mm. And mm -hmm. then he's willing to, the thing is, is he <clears throat> isn't going to let up on it. Like he's going to put it out there until finally you're going to mm. go, okay, what's the next step with that? <laughs> and so he whiteboards it to a point where we can't do anything else with it except start to meet with software companies because he's asking me, can you get on board with this? And I'm like, I need, you know, my background is I'm a CPA. I'm like, how much is this going to cost? 
I don't know if this is going to cost thirty thousand right. dollars or fourteen million dollars. Well, deal I killer. Have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, Most. and 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 if you tell me it's going to cost ten million dollars, well, I don't know how we're going to sell enough real estate to afford this thing that's called that's going to be ten million dollars. So, anyways, but. He will never. He was not going to let money get in the way either. Right. Because he was like, things get built all the time. Things get built that cost a lot mm -hmm. of money all the time. Yeah. We just go figure out how we make this happen. And so he is great at asking the questions, not letting it go, and surrounding himself by people that have mm. gone before him that have yeah. done similar types of is things. Is it possible to do something like this if you have a mindset of scarcity? No way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I really don't think you can. Mm -mm. So that doesn't even, there's not an ounce of that in him. You know, and, and I think a lot of what helps too, and what I appreciate about this friendship, Cliff and Cliff, is is that, uh, you know, I love this and you can write this down because, you know, our kind of my motto is work with people who are moving towards you, not away from you. Right. You know, and when you surround yourself with people who are moving towards you, they're generally going to support any and all that can happen and transpire in the world around you. Yeah, that's great advice you know and we do have writer downers and that's mm -hmm. a good writer downer mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah get back the ones that though, are swimming toward you right uh-huh back to your um the question about service and i think where michael and i probably um compliment each other i suppose is that i have a huge passion for this industry and for um, the life of the agent for the agent themselves for the well-being of the agent for the business of the agent for the broker um, and, you know, we've talked about this before is, you know, there's a lot that's still very clunky and archaic in this business. There's a lot of good old boy handshake deals that still exist in this business. There's, there's stuff that's broken, you know, and I mean, since early on, you know, 20 years ago, we started recognizing, especially when we were on the road training and doing a lot of training from 2006 to 2010, you know, we were exposed to a lot of things and, um, and it just, what we saw over and over is ways in which the industry works that doesn't necessarily best serve the agent and the consumer. And so that's really been my heart and soul and everything that Michael's, whatever his wild hair ideas have been, um, which there's been many over the years, um, what I'm always kind of searching for in that is, does this elevate the industry? Does this elevate the, in, the agent? Does this elevate the broker? Does it does it elevate the experience for the consumer? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I get excited about. That's what I was really excited mm -hmm. about in our days doing America's Home Rescue, mm -hmm. our short sale training business, and in in Tours As because really the heart and soul behind Tours As is making the the, <clears throat> the life of the agent easier and elevating the consumer experience. So, yeah, and that's all about service. That's really yeah. all it about is, yeah, serving. Yeah, definitely improving the economics to the agent and improving the experience of the consumer thrusting the agent's value proposition yes yeah well beyond what it could be right right yeah too many people sell the, the features mm -hmm. of whatever it is they're selling and they don't really sell the benefits, the benefits yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um you know birthing a company like this is probably akin to having quadruplets <laughs> i would guess uh what's just i know there are we've got people watching the show today mm -hmm. who may be in your shoes mm. uh, someday. What is it like from a fa family standpoint <laughs> when you have this elephant in the, <clears throat> in the bed with you? We talked about pillow talk <laughs> and stuff like that. How is oh it, <laughs> how hard is it to keep, you know, just keep a, a normal sense of, uh, you know, like how were your holidays and stuff? Are you pulled in all directions having to go and do this, you're about to start a big rollout. How much pressure does it put on you guys as a couple? Is that for me? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you okay. answer. Um, you know, we don't have children <clears throat> ourselves. Um, and so we have room in our lives to really devote ourselves to this. And we're both a thousand percent in of whatever we're doing. Um, but I mean, we do, I mean, most all of our dinners are talking about towards as and the next steps and conversations we're in and potential partnerships and how can we make things better and taking that feedback what do they say that the the um the breakfast of of business owners is feedback this is what we live on right it's like sure how can we improve how can we make this better how can we create a better customer experience but et cetera et cetera so 
it is a challenge to balance, and we are always trying to figure out how to do that. Um, I can't. We haven't mastered that. I mean, I, I feel like this balance thing is a whole sort of kind of myth thing out there. It's a target, it's, right? Yeah. 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 And but there's times that we just go, okay, let's just talk about something else, you know, right. or let's just sort of like say that's off limits for. But it's never for more than a few hours, really, yeah. in yeah. all honesty. But we both love it. You know, and we're so excited about the potential of it and what it can really do for, for people's lives, you know. And so um, it's sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, in some ways it, it, with real estate. I mean, when you love what you do, and again, <laughs> we don't have kiddos, so we've been, and we've been able to do real estate together. So the fact that we would work 70, 80 hour weeks to us, it was fun. It's been fun because we did it together. Um, and it wasn't like encroaching necessarily on family time. But I, I, I mean, in all honesty, that's a challenge. It's a challenge to. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think anything protect. is going to be a trade off, right? Yeah. Because if you want to be successful, you have to commit to whatever it is that is going to help you be successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just having, I mean, a successful marriage doesn't come without work and, and, yeah. and things like that. So there's hope out there, guys. Don't worry. You're not going to have to blow your marriage up. You know, it's funny no. because a lot of people get into real estate and they find that that is uh, a lot of stress yeah. uh, on their relationship with their other. Mm -hmm. And the great news is, is it's because of, you know, people like you who mm -hmm. are trying to solve those problems and put time back into people's calendars and mm -hmm. get some efficiencies mm -hmm. in the business like just like you did with the short sale business so you got I mean you have a track record of doing this this is mm -hmm. not like you know your first rodeo uh, and uh, I'm just that's why you know I, I got really excited to have a chance to, to run into Stacy in Denver at one of our sprints and and uh, hear the story uh, and of course Elizabeth Riley uh, our dear mutual friend is, uh, is really you know uh, gung-ho behind uh, the you know the initiative here and so forth and and i'm excited to you know be here in dallas as you guys uh, come into our market um you were talking a little bit about how um this this industry is somewhat antiquated and you know if you go down to houston you've got one big mls but you mm -hmm. get into dallas and you've got i don't know 27 mls's yeah. in the dallas fort worth area something like that some crazy number part of netris um what kind of challenges are you guys going to have getting tours as up and running in in this market well there's actually um you know there's been uh tours as is also part of a um a, a, a company called a real estate standards organization so rezo so some of our uh, viewers out here may know already have heard that name but um, there is this, you know, historically 25, 30 years, there has been a very fragmented approach to how individual MLSs, to your point, Houston, they have a whole level of software that they provide to their agents um, as a suite. Netris provides this, ABOR provides this, uh, you know, Amarillo does their own thing, um, uh, as well as five, 600 plus other MLSs across the country. So this has been, this has of course proven to be uh, pretty impactful in terms of how uh, agents ultimately get tools provided by their MLSs on a national, uh, uh, also on a local level, as well as a national level. So it was, um, there are certainly challenges with that because many of the MLSs uh, have been really built to pick a winner, if you will, mm -hmm. um, pick a winner, meaning if it's time to switch to a new software provider for it's just, if, if, if there's software A, B, C, and D available, in many cases, the, what's historically happened is they'll interview A, B, C, and D mm -hmm. and pick a winner. Right. And it just, you just happened to make me think about every mm -hmm. bridge we drive over in Texas mm -hmm was built by the lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. and I, that's, mm -hmm. I keep thinking mm -hmm. that in my head every mm -hmm. time you say that, right? Exactly, exactly. And having brain practitioners for over 20 years, what we can tell you is that very uh, little of the software we use, this is not at all um, against the MLSs, everything, but very little software. I mean, we're sole proprietors, we go find our own software. Right. what works for our specific use case scenario, as most agents do. Sure. I mean, it's great, the software that's put before us, but a lot of times we're not using that. A lot of times those decisions were made on our behalf without really truly knowing our pain points. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, um, if we're 
talking about it, the elephant in the room is, is for example, showings. And Netris recently made a decision to go with uh, a company called Broker Bay. And we, we, were, we presented recently at the Reach Labs uh, Texas Realtors Convention at, at the, for, as a Reach Labs uh, participant. And many companies came up to us and said, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of you. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I've never heard of you. Mm. And so to your point, this is the challenge between getting, ultimately getting the awareness out there with MLSs, um, you know, to really become more familiar with tours ads because we're a startup as a lot of companies, mm -hmm. a lot of companies are startups. They don't have uh, all the money in the world to make the biggest splash in the world, but they have really darn good technology. They have darn good that solves very very relevant needs. Um, so well, Microsoft didn't have the best technology; you know, they just had the best marketing. I mean, that was absolutely. You, know, you want to look at some real yeah. life cases? Yeah, uh, you know that's that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's just like you know when we were when we first started doing short sell training back in two thousand six, we were one of the very few that was teaching from the realtor's perspective, not from the investor's perspective. Yes. We were one of the first ones to the scene to do this. We're mavericks in that space. But then it's like Seth Godin says about the purple cow, right? You know, you know, it, it all, all the cows. You got the purple cow, but then all the cows eventually become brown cows. You know what I mean? There's no no way to differentiate. It becomes so noisy. It, there's no way to really differentiate between everyone. So I think what we're really excited about um, is what some of the leadership in the industry. To your point, if I may go here. Um, is that the some of the largest MLSs in the industry have said this is really a disservice essentially to to the to our agents, um, to our participants, and to the consumer to continue picking winners. So why not in the spirit of interoperability, why not in the spirit of providing choice to agents and brokerages, move toward creating and some something that allows there to be more choice. And that's what the top, the top MLSs uh, in the country are doing. And they've actually, we're honored that they have invited Tours As to become a part of one of four top vendors who are gonna be part of this new showingchoice.com initiative, which is a kind of an Amazon, if you will, marketplace for showings where you can have the broker beige, the showing times, the Tours As, all working within the within within this marketplace where agents can pick and choose what they want to use and it thrusts innovation into the next level right allowing and they're so excited about this technology that it's probably they're already looking at it um, to apply to offer management transaction management all these different things to be able to remove the picking of winners yeah Oh, that's incredible. I'm yeah. so glad we got to that point. Yeah. That, that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> it happens every time, doesn't it? It does, yes, sir. Yeah. What time is it? 1.57. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, 1.58. Uh-oh. Um, unfortunately, gosh, can we have you guys back? Sure. Oh, let's do it. And, and let's do, do it. A, I do feel like we're just cracking I know, open we the, are, the we thing. Are. That's the thing. Uh, but I mean, I'm so impressed with what you guys have created and so excited about what's to come here and, mm -hmm. and, and your uh, expansion efforts and your rollout. If someone were interested in, in getting some more information, yep. and, and you guys are a startup, and, and uh, so there's all kinds of things that you could talk to people about. But if somebody wanted to reach out directly to you and and uh, just either learn more or find mm -hmm. out what other opportunities there might be. What's the mm -hmm. best way to get a hold of you guys? Well, if there are any view, if any of you are actually in Austin or in the Central Texas region under Austin Board of Realtors, um, you can register for free. You can start using the app right now. Um, soon, thanks to uh, uh, the Freeman, uh, the Cliff Freeman Group, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, the, uh, the, we're going to be making the same thing available throughout the. Uh, uh, throughout the, well, actually that's unfolding to, to determine because to your point, Netris has their hands in All about 30 or 35 different yes, MLSs. So we're yeah. having to navigate a little bit of that, but that's going to happen. If someone was interested in, in actually getting this into their brokerage, um, I would just say reach out to us through our toursas.ai website, just complete the form and we'll reach out and extend that conversation and figure out what we can what we can do to get that into the hands okay, of so the agents pretty quickly. So it's T O T O U R 
uh, Z A Z Z. So T O U R is in tour. Just like the shirt. Zaz. Tour Zaz. Z A Z Z. So tour dot, Zaz. And it's dot A I. Dot A I. And that stands for. Uh, artificial for intelligence. Artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's right. That's so that's we're excited pretty, about it. Pretty we're, important stuff. Yeah, we're going to see, yeah. the, the, all of our viewers are going to be seeing a lot more about Tours as, as as we go into the next three to six months. Yeah, how, mm -hmm. how exciting. Well, we're, like I said, we're excited. We wish you guys the best. Thanks for driving all the way from Austin. Thank Absolutely. You. Here on the show, the, that yeah. white knuckler, down, you know, up 35. 35. Yes. Uh, yeah, is, oh, that's the worst. I'd rather go get a couple of root canals and <laughs> try to drive that thing. It's fun to be here. Thank yes. you so much for the invite. Yeah, Thank you so much. And we're going to have dinner tonight at the Cowboys Club, so I'm very excited nice. to treat yes. you guys to some nice. good, good food here. Yeah. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, Trelvis Cowboys this weekend. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, I think against the Commanders, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, are we going to beat the spread? I think so. I think I, I'm feeling it. Come man. on now, everybody's healthy. <laughs> yeah. Number one seed, here we come. Yep, that's it. <laughs> We're coming after them, baby. All right, just like we'll be coming back here next week, and you'll get to see another episode of some fantastic entrepreneurs, real estate agents, just really people influencing uh, and putting a ding in the real estate universe. And that'll be next right here on everybody, Cliff's, Cliff's Notes. Notes. Tune in to Cliff's Notes every Thursday at one o'clock central for the tips, tricks, and tactics to explode your business. I guarantee it. Woo!